Hi, you join me here in the dirty shed reviewing tools such as the Milwaukee M18 uh, drill. Drill? Drill. Um, thanks for joining us. Welcome along. Where have you been this whole time? Get yourself in the shed. Let's review a tool. Uh, okay, guys, yeah, welcome along. So, um, thinking cap off. Actually, it's a bit nippy, isn't it? It I'm is cold keep it today. On. I know it's a stupid hat, but you know what? My head's cold. Oh, right. right, yeah. So, well, up first, you've you got to tell who are we? What are we doing? Well, we're Dirty Shed Creations, and what we're starting to do is tool reviews. What we have, what we've kind of come to realise, Mark and I, you know, we, you know, we do try, um, you know, we feel like we've been on a little bit of a hiatus of late. You know, we haven't been able to get the content out. Both of us have been really busy. You know, the real world kind of takes over. You've got to earn an income. Um, so anyway, what we're trying to do just of late is we're trying to kind of make our channel more, I suppose, appealing. We've looked at a lot of different kind of ways of doing that. And one thing that we think might be quite interesting and you guys might appreciate is tool reviews. Um, obviously, this workshop is absolutely stuffed with thousands of quids worth of tools um, and we thought you know maybe it's worth letting you guys know what are the good ones what are the bad ones what are the faults how do they work if we can and it's possible we're going to get into a little bit of maintenance with some tools as well which might be just a little bit more than kind of other people are doing so welcome along and today what are we looking at we're looking at the m18 fuel brushless uh, sds drill um, so, I think without further ado, let's get cracking. Because yeah. I imagine you're doing like graphics and coming mm. in. Tool review! Yeah. Dirty Shed Creation! <laughs> Dirty Shed Creation scathing tool reviews! Yeah. This is sh**! I was using a corded 110 Bosch drill. Brilliant thing, quite cheap, 100 quid. Uh, you know, you can get them anywhere. Works a treat. The only thing is, is I had to carry a transformer. You're always tripping over the lead. What you find with these kind of battery operated things, and this is no, this is no great revelation, but with battery operated tools, you're on the job and you're doing what you need to do before you've run out your extension lead, you've plugged, you've carried your transformer, you've carried the box your drills in, you've got drills sticking out of your pocket. You know, you know, you, if, if you're somebody who kind of works with, Somebody who works with their hands, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. With a with a battery drill, you're there, you're drilling before your mates, who's using corded tools, is even set up. So what have we got? Bang! There we go. I'll let Mark get in there and have a look. I was doing kind of like audio visual work and CCTV stuff, and um, you know, CCTV particularly, you're up ladders, and you know, so that means you, you need to, you know, you're pulling out of a 240 240 volt wall socket. You then transform using a transformer and then using the drill. So it's not just the drill you need, but you need the transformer, generally an extension cable. You know, it's just you, you're carrying all this thing here, bang. You know, you don't need to. This doesn't need any pat testing. It's battery operated. Take a couple of fully charged batteries, and they're generally as long as you're not doing a thousand, you know, drilling a thousand holes through, you know, cast iron or whatever. You know, your battery will probably last you all day. But you're there, you're on the job, and you're working before your colleagues are. If you're a skiver and you don't want to work, then I'd say, yeah, take your take your corded bits and pieces. That's probably not going to be the most popular. You know, there is a there's an affordability element to this as well. This drill was somewhere around the three hundred pound mark. So what would that be in dollars? Three sixty dollars somewhere around there. Yep. Just to give you a kind of rough conversion. How long have I had it? I've had this about probably about eighteen months, maybe two years, if I'm being. Um, if I'm being honest, it's the fuel, it's this brushless fuel technology. So what that means is there's no brushes in there. The brushes wear out with kind of tools. So this is brushless. This one's got an anti-vibration system. So something that I became aware of, you'll often see me drilling and I keep this finger way out of the way. I, I've started drilling with that one because I've spent you know years and years just drilling with that finger. Um, and what you find is because you're gripping so hard like that, the vibration really gets in there. I've got no issues with that, you know, hand, it's fine. But what I've started doing is kind of using the trigger like that. And you'll often see me kind of doing that if you've if you've watched any of our films. Quick review, what have we got here? We've got three settings. So essentially we've got a lock here. Get that round. This is quite stiff actually, I have found. So that locks the chuck. You've got a chasing out kind of setting here. We've then got hammer drill, which is drill with the hammer function. We've then also got, if we kind of turn that to here, we've also just got a drilling function. Um, 
One of the great things about this tool particularly is this has interchangeable chucks. So what we can do is we can just pop that chuck off and then we can have like a traditional 13mm HSS, high speed steel um, chuck. I need to do that again again. <laughs> um, I do do a lot of metal drilling and it's nice to kind of, you know, it's very difficult to get metal SDS uh, HSS, high speed steel, uh, metal cutting drill bits. Most of them tend to be for masonry, the SDS range. So having that chuck really helps. What I would say, and a little bit of a negative is, no matter how hard you kind of, tr you know, this, how hard you do use this quick release chuck, I do find when I'm drilling, after about a minute, well, after about 10 or, 10 or so seconds of drilling, my drill slips in the chuck. And I do think that that's one of the major downsides of um, this setup is the chucks. I don't want to be kind of, I don't, I don't want to be scathing about it. I do really like this drill, but um, it does annoy me because what I do is I sit there, no matter how hard you, no matter how hard you kind of clamp that drill in there, here you go which I can go through about there. If I start drilling with that, within about 10 seconds, the drill has gripped and it's slipped. So the drill stopped moving, but the chuck is still moving. It damages and makes your drill bits more likely to slip. And it's also just annoying because the first thing, you know, you want to get on with the job, you want to be in there, you want to be drilling, and then all of a sudden you're like stopping, putting it down, grabbing it like that, you know, you're lucky if you can get it one more click on, um, and then, then, you know, you're starting again, and it's just like, it's just a bit annoying that I find. The other thing I do find is, you've got this, you need to, there you go, so that's locked in now, but you can see what I mean, you've got to do this, this kind of click, there you go. And it's just, again, what, what they're kind of wanting you to do is they're wanting you to turn that all the way around there, lock the chuck, and then that's your SDS open, fit your SDS, close it. So every time you change an SDS bit, you have to change this knob. Or you have to do this kind of like, let's take it off there for a minute. Um, you have to do this kind of, kind of try and trick it into, you know, getting it to stick. The other thing, when you've got drill bits in, it tends to be front heavy. So, you know, your, your drill's constantly falling forward, um, particularly with HSS kind of metal bits and this chuck. And when you've got that set in there and, you, you know, you're on a, a client's, you know, ceramic floor, whatever it might be, uh, you put your drill down after drilling a hole and your drill falls forward onto the, onto the drill bit. You're not only risking damaging whatever surface you're working on or whatever surface you've got under the drill, but you're also risking damaging your HSS drill bit. You know, what are you going to say? Well, go and buy another two dollar, two pound drill bit. But you already got one in your chuck. You know, I don't want to go and buy another one. I want to make that last and work for me as long as it possibly can. OK, that said, those really are my two big negatives and they both revolve around the chuck. But I do really like this kind of chuck swappability if you like so um, there we go um, I mean I suppose people are gonna want to see the drill being used aren't they <laughs> let's just pop that in there and that's quite a thick it's quite a thick gauge of steel so come on let's have a look so first things first we're gonna sit that onto one thing to mention is we should never use this chuck, i.e. the standard three-jaw chuck um, with the hammer function. We'll destroy the chuck, uh, we'll destroy this chuck. So, let's have a little go. And obviously this is gonna work perfectly now, so click that on there. Stop. Do you want to? Do you want to come in for a close-up? Mm -hmm. I'm just hoping it'll grip it. <laughs> it worked. It worked perfectly, didn't it? I mean, you know, like I say, I'm not. I don't want to kind of. Uh, I don't want to badmouth this drill, but in using it for this eight, these 18 months that I've been using it, 
this is what I've found. These are the things that annoy me about this drill. On the whole, I really like it. It's not a cheap drill. Um, battery life, really good. Um, if you're not doing kind of heavy work, you're not drilling a, you know, you're not having to drill a hundred holes in an hour, the batteries last really well. There is a, there is a charge indicator on the back of the battery there, um, four positions. Um, the battery's charged, 45 minutes, the batteries are charged. Um, little light at the front to illuminate what you're drilling. Uh, I do find these are really quite useful, these lights, but then on the other side of things, sometimes they can cast a bit of a shadow. So that kind of stays on so long. Um, don't know what else to say, really. Would I recommend them? Yes, I certainly would. So look, you know, I hope I hope that was useful. And anyone who's out there who's thinking about buying, um, you know, an SDS drill, you couldn't go far wrong with a Milwaukee. I mean, you know, it's not really... Um, I suppose it's not the guy that drills one or two holes a year kind of drill, you know, maybe get something a little bit cheaper, but for a kind of a tradesman, somebody who works kind of, you know, an installer of some nature, definitely a great kind of tool. You know, we want to be as honest as we can with these reviews, so if something is absolute garbage, we're going to tell you it's garbage, and trust me, I hate garbage tools, so you're going to find out if, um, if something is rubbish. But, you know, like, subscribe, please comment, you know, what are your thoughts? You know, what are your thoughts on this review, for one thing? But what are your thoughts on Milwaukee tools, or, you know, are you using Makita? I mean, I think the kind of the the market leaders at the moment for me are kind of Milwaukee, DeWalt and Makita, you know, really I don't touch a great deal of anything else. And that's just through experience, you know, I've worked with some Makita tools that have lasted for, you know, constant use of like two or three hours a day, I'm thinking about sanders here. Those things are doing that job, you know, year in, year out, and they're also, there's maintenance elements, so you can swap out the brushes, um, you can buy new kind of bits and pieces for them. So, you know, I do I do like that element. When you've spent a lot of money on a drill like this, you want to know that that drill isn't going to just pack in in six months' time. You want to know that you've got that drill for... I mean, realistically, I know people who've had the same drill for kind of, you know, you're talking five, six, seven years. You know, maybe then they might start talking about uh, swapping out. But um, interesting story, actually. And a slight aside is what started me on this is I had a 12 volt Milwaukee drill and this is no word of a lie I left that drill out on a wall over Christmas one year this would be going back when we first built the dirty shed actually and I kind of finished what I was doing put it on a wall went off forgot about it came back first week of January so now it had been outside for two weeks in the snow frost rain Obviously the battery was fried, so I took the battery off, threw it away, clipped on the other battery that I had. That thing went on to still work for another two years after that. So, you know, Milwaukee, it is good kit. Um, I just think, I, I just for this drill particularly, I just wish they'd, wish they'd maybe spent a bit more money on the, or a bit more thought on the interchangeability of the chucks. But I do think this is relatively new technology, so maybe this will improve with further makes and models if you like so you know tune in next week for our watson scathing reviews no let me redo that so tune in next week for dirty shed creation scathing reviews hopefully that was useful for people <laughs> we will see yeah should we just do some stupid stuff like now Safety, safety first everyone. Let's have a little go.